This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. Welcome to the Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer. Join us as Deb talks with her guests, experts in their fields, as they share real-life stories and techniques to power up your business. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And today we're going to get back to our roots a little bit and really talk about marketing, which is, of course, my passion. It's where I started, um, and, and it's where I still exist in the business world. So I'm going to have so much fun today talking with Trish Saman. So hello, good morning, Trish. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me, Deb. I appreciate it. Well, we really are going to have a lot of fun. So let me tell people a little bit about you, and then we will just dive into this. So Trish Saman is notoriously straightforward, who is quick to laugh and put others at ease. She is also a no-nonsense digital marketing expert intent on successfully collaborating with female business owners to help them launch into the entrepreneurial landscape. A recent graduate of the internationally recognized Goldman Sachs 10 KSB program, Trish can dive into the details of her client's business, help determine the opportunities that exist within each business, and craft a custom growth plan. With a notable ability to illuminate the unique superpowers that each of her clients innately possess and leverage those abilities to help them attract their best customers, Trish is part chief marketing officer, and part best friend. Co-founder of two companies, Go Beyond SEO, a digital marketing agency, and Creative Clarity, a marketing consultancy for women entrepreneurs, Trish is also an active member of several business organizations, including NABO, which is the National Association of Women Business Owners. So again, Trish, welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Deb. You know, it's interesting. My company is called Wise Women Communications. And and I've had people that said, well, do you only work with women? Or do you only work, you know, for team members, do you only accept women? And I say, well, no, everybody's money is green and everybody can do the work. But when I launched my company, and good golly, it's been over 20 years ago, one of the things that I specifically did was name it obviously wise women communications because i wanted to reach women i wanted to work with women and i think it might have actually even been an, something that i picked up at a nabo conference where women were talking about the fact that you know there there's the good old boy network right and so women have that too you know we like to support other women but i want to know you know why why did you decide that this was your passion in life so, and I want to be very clear, it's a great question, because um, I'm actually, one of my partners is male, and I'm raising two sons, so mm-hmm. I want to be very clear that I'm not anti-man. Right, right. We love men. Love yeah, men. Love <laughs> men. Um, but I, I have found, and I have found with my own experience, some of it's anecdotal, and then also some of it is my experience with working with women, is they have a tendency to hold back a little bit. They mm-hmm. have a tendency to... Um, underplay or downplay their Mm -hmm. own abilities and i'm talking brilliant Mm -hmm. brilliant women Mm -hmm. and i find that when they get together and they decide to support one another they can tease out these exceptional outcomes and they can push one another and promote one another and support one another in a way that doesn't feel like a leg up it feels more collaborative Mm -hmm. and I've also found, unfortunately, on the other side, where when women are not working together, it gets a little competitive and backbiting. Right. And do not like, you know, setting up a, a situation like that. I much mm-hmm. prefer to be around women who are supporting one another because right. they're naturally nurturing. Mm-hmm. That's just the very nature. They just naturally mm-hmm. tend to be a bit nurturing. Not all women, of course. This is not right. every oh, yes. I found mm-hmm. that more women tend to be more nurturing, and um, and in doing so, can build these incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, not only relationships, but uh, companies and move mountains. Right. So working with women, I, my undergrad school was a, a women's college. It's now actually co-ed, but when I went, um, it was a, a women's college. And mm-hmm. 
we tried different things. We were more willing to speak out. We were more willing to be wrong. Mm -hmm. There weren't men in the room. Mm -hmm. So I found that that mentality was something that was really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. And I was curious to see if we couldn't level the playing field by supporting one another. So right. that, that was part of why it became a passion for me. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it is an interesting dynamic. I mean, you know, going all the way back to men are from Mars and women are from Venus, which I never read that book because I just thought, um, it is very different working with men and working with women. Um, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, sometimes women, oh, catty, nasty, mean. Yeah. Um, you know, years ago, I worked for the American Cancer Society, mm -hmm. typical nonprofit organization. Many of our employees were women. Sure. You know, and, and there was, and I, you know, obviously this made an impression, and this was, you know, 25 years ago that I worked there. There was a box of Meow Mix cat food mm -hmm. that would make the rounds of people's desks. And if you had been particularly catty in a meeting or something like that, the box of Meow Mix would appear in your, your desk. And the bad word, some people thought that was great. I mean, they're like, whoa, you know, like, no, 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 this, this is bad. This is, this is not right. something to be proud of. Um, and I've also found that, you know, you, uh, in many cases, women hold on to things, you know, good and bad. I mean, we right. remember when someone did something good for us in second grade. Right. We also remember when someone did something bad in second grade. Right. And men are like, whatever, let's go have a beer. <laughs> you know? no, I have and, definitely seen that. No question. No question about it. You know, and, and, and it is tricky. I mean, there have been times where I thought I prefer men because you know where you stand with them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they also, uh, I'm not sure how to say this, it, you know, uh, Men are good at teams. I mean, obviously, you know, just sports is, is you know, the, the, the big thing. But in many cases, men truly are, and obviously generalizing all these various things, in it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and part of that might be their ego, you know, whatever it is. But women, as you mentioned, we collaborate. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't stop to think, okay, if I do this for you, then you have to do something next for me. Right. And many times I see that with men, um, you know, and it's, so that's, I do, you know, more and more, and maybe it's just as I'm getting older, I do prefer working with women. I just, you know, find much, much better synergies with them. Right. And um, to use your meow mix analogy, I doubt that would happen with a bunch of, of men. Right. And I feel mm -hmm. that that power dynamic needs to change in mm -hmm. that um, if a woman speaks out or speaks confidently about a subject matter or mm -hmm. says, actually, I would like to try something else, even though we've never tried it before and mm -hmm. attempts to innovate in some way. Right. Um, unfortunately, you can see that there is some negativity. I'd like, I, my personal mission is to change that power mm -hmm. dynamic, that you can be wrong out loud. Mm -hmm. that you can be frustrated out right. loud. And that being frustrated or being wrong is not um, reason to shrink, become a shrinking violet. Mm -hmm. um, it says, well, you know, if we're going to, if we're going to fall, we're going to fall forward, as they mm -hmm. say. Right. Um, I, I do still see some of that collectively where that there is a little bit of cattiness, but I will say mm -hmm. this. I've gotten very, very selective about the women with whom I spend my time mm -hmm. so that when right. we are um, having a moment of weakness or a moment of real great power, mm -hmm. that uh, you're supported. And I feel that entrepreneurship is growing for women as well. It's growing in leaps and bounds. I mean, if you look at some mm -hmm. of the statistics that Nabo puts forward, um, you'll see that, I think it was in 1988, there was a, a legislative change that happened, and Ronald Reagan put it forth, that um, I think it was October of 88, so, you know, 30 plus years ago now, mm -hmm. um, where a, a woman who was trying to secure financing for her business had to have a man co-sign. Oh. And, oh, no, crazy. <laughs> kind of crazy. So, and here's what kind of broke the mold on this was there was this woman, I believe she was a widow mm -hmm. and she was starting her own business and her father was, had already passed. Clearly her husband was not with us right. any longer. So she needed to <laughs> get her son who was 17 ah. to sign, uh -huh. um, you know, because he had testosterone and, you right. know, mm -hmm. so he had the parts he, <laughs> like this absurd, mm -hmm. like, are you kidding me? This woman is accomplished. Right. And, mm -hmm. Um, not that she'd necessarily need to be, but she was, and mm -hmm. that she was going to have her child who was not even out of high school yet. Right. Oh, so probably legally couldn't really right. sign that contract. I mean, that's the funny part about it. Man, when I tell you, when I heard that story, I was like, whoa. Uh -huh. Again, like I, I 
in the as a younger woman I never really you know I certainly was proud of who I was and and happy to be a woman but I was very surprised and people ah you know I don't know if it's that bad until you start seeing it in the flesh and then like, wow right. so I'm like wow in my lifetime that was a thing like I can't believe that was a thing right. so um yet again hearing that statistic last fall was yet another reason why I was I, this is going to be very important that you know that I focus on female entrepreneurs and to your point in the beginning I will not solely work with women in fact I do have male clients right. I do mm -hmm. They're owned by men. Their and money is green. <laughs> exactly right. And um, if anything, some of the, the gentlemen that I work with um, as, you know, that are coaching clients and things like that, pref prefer to have the perspective because mm -hmm. sometimes right. there can be a bit of an echo chamber. And I think that can happen with women as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but working with women, I enjoy the collaboration. I enjoy pulling them out of their shells because I'm naturally a bit of an extrovert myself. I think you are too, Deb. Mm -hmm. No, I'm shy. No. No, totally shy. <laughs> just, you know, a little wallflower up there. But um, pulling them out of their shell and saying, listen, you have something unique to offer. You have a voice. Mm -hmm. Let's put that out there and let's monetize it. Like, let's get you, let's right. get you some money here. Let's mm -hmm. make this business work for you. And um, so that's, I mean, we've kind of taken the long road, but that's part of the reason why I, I like working with women mm -hmm. is because I do think that there's collaborators. I think there's brilliance that often gets uh, eclipsed either culturally or otherwise. Right. Um, I feel that as a, a successful entrepreneur, it's important to tease some of that mm -hmm. out. You know, I think I heard this expression once where it says, when you make it to the top, it's your job to send the elevator back to the first floor. Oh, I, I like that. Like, yeah, I like that mm -hmm. too. And I, I, would, I would venture to say that my journey is not yet at the top, but I'm willing to send the elevator back down anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and put that hand down and help somebody up. Without question. Mm -hmm. Without question. I think, it's, uh, I think it's vital. I think it makes the world a better place. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. you know, and it's interesting when I talk with women of different demographics. You know, I'm at the <clears throat> tail end <laughs> of the baby boomer era. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have it nearly as much. But I think women who are definitely older than I am mm -hmm. really were taught that as a woman you didn't brag about yourself you right. know, you, in many ways I mean you know we're not talking about you know June Cleaver here but you know you did defer to men in in right. some cases and you know and and, and I, I'm fascinated now when I see the Millennials and the Gen Xers um, and what is it now Gen Z I think is the next one um, but when I see these women who have been told you can do anything right you know, and and they firmly believe that because they've been taught that and and i love that because you know we do see them starting their own companies being ceos you know it's still very um alarming when we look at the number of large companies who don't have female leadership you know whether it's a ceo or just anybody at that c level we don't sure. see that but of course what we are seeing more and more of are women saying, I've had enough of this, I'm going to start my own business. Right. Because they know that for whatever reason, and maybe it's that they just don't want to be, you know, that, and, and, you know, I think that's one of the things people forget is maybe women just don't want to lead those gigantic companies. Right. Um, but, you know, they're starting their own businesses and they're saying, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. Um, you know, and, and so it's, it's gotta be fascinating if, if from your perspective to see all of these women who are saying, okay, you know what, we're going to do this ourselves. Yeah, trailblazing, I think, is, uh, you know, I believe that this century, with the digital age in particular, mm -hmm. it's really, it's it's the next industrial revolution, essentially. Right. It's mm -hmm. our version of the industrial mm -hmm. revolution. And born of those things are these innovators and mm -hmm. people who are um, taking businesses in another direction. And you mm -hmm. see a lot of um, women who are uh, forging a path. And sometimes they're forging a path, and the path is not meant to go to a sea level. Um, executive level because they maybe they want to stay home with their family too. They right. really do want to have it all. And then there's others who are pursuing avenues that are fairly dominated by women, which I have found that marketing tends to be that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. Because it's communications. <laughs> it is, it, it's, a, a, you know, notoriously a strength within our gender. Mm -hmm. um, but you're also seeing it in areas of tech and um, uh, biology, right, which are truly non-traditional areas for women. 
Absolutely. Yes. As a matter of fact, some of my clients are in that space because mm -hmm. um, they are tech minded or right. they're, I, I have um, a woman that I'm working with. She has two labs. One is in Wyoming. The other one's in Oxford and mm -hmm. she is a scientist and that's her mm -hmm. focus. So when you're dealing with like the left brain, right brain thing, marketing, it really isn't an area that's strength for her. Right. Mm -hmm. yet she's pretty much alone. It's her and her partner who's also mm -hmm. female. But they are um, a couple of females in a space that is predominantly, again, mm -hmm. dominated by men, which mm -hmm. isn't necessarily a bad thing. I don't mm -hmm. even think it's necessarily purposeful. But I do think that there's a generational component to it. Women mm -hmm. many years ago were not encouraged to go into the sciences or into mm -hmm. technology. And that's why it's really interesting to watch educationally STEM programs, you know, that right. technology. Mm -hmm. So um, where more young women... Um, and not just young women, but uh, women who are uh, uh, women of color as well are being encouraged mm -hmm. to, so we can kind of diversify even further. Right. Because there are these pockets of people that have wild brilliance and no platform. Mm -hmm. So again, another reason why um, working with this subgroup, and you can't even call women a subgroup, we actually make up. Right. Uh -huh. Men do, but mm -hmm. even women of color too, where uh, there's brilliance that's just kind of left to die on the vine, mm -hmm. so to speak because it's not being teased out. And uh, I don't know, I, I find that this space really fascinating. I think that the time era that we live in, the fact that you can start your business so easily, mm -hmm. you know, uh, with access to the internet and access right. to finding your mm -hmm. audience, because really the most powerful thing that a, a business can have isn't money, it's an audience. Right. Mm -hmm. You have an audience. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can do an, literally anything. Mm -hmm. And um, the digital age provides people access to curate that audience right. uh, quickly and very mm -hmm. specifically too. So it's the, it's a fun time to be alive. Oh be yeah. Alive. You know, and, and technology is definitely, you know, really, really, you know, as you said, leveled the playing field, you know, women can, you know, be home raising their kids if that is their choice yeah. and, you know, having their business in their spare bedroom, um, yeah. you know, and, and working with people around the world, you know, all these various things. And, and, you know, no longer do we have to go into offices. Um, you know, uh, we, we don't have to, to pick the nine to five type of, of role. Right. And, you know, I, I think that's, and, and if in many ways I see it frustrating men that they can't, do that and it's like well sure you can <laughs> you know you, you just have to make that choice but for men it's kind of that no nah, you know that's you know they they need to stay in that traditional area um you know and and but yeah i mean women really can you know can do everything and it's it's funny every time i i talk with women about this subject i remember the commercial from oh gosh it was probably in the 70s you know where where it's the woman and she's got the frying pan you know and she can take home the bacon and she can she can fry it up in the pan and she can do everything and you know that then actually becomes the problem is trying to do everything um sure. because you know we it is difficult and and so i think many women need to realize that they need to reach out, you know, and, and as you said, we need to build these communities, we need to build these partnerships, and, you know, learn from others, and, and I love that that's part of what you do, is you work with women to help give them that guidance, you know, you mentioned your, your, uh, you know, your client who that marketing is just not her forte, right, it used to be that, you know, when we, well, actually, it still is, in many cases, we start our business, and we think, we have to do it all. We have right. to know everything. Well, right. no, you know, I, I don't, I have a car. I yeah. have no idea, you know, how to be, uh, now I can program the clock. I can change the time zones in my car um, because it's old enough that it doesn't do it itself, but I'm not going to change my own oil. I'm not going to do things like I take it to the expert. So, you know, in our businesses, we need to, to work with experts also. Right. I, I couldn't agree with you more. As a matter of fact, I hire a lot of experts to do some other components mm -hmm. um, of my of my business. And um, sometimes, sometimes people as business owners, we don't want to release everything. You know, right. we kind of control freaks, which mm -hmm. I completely respect and can identify with fully. Oh yeah. Oh, the hardest thing for me in the world was when I decided to get a producer for this radio program. Oh gosh, mm -hmm. heaven forbid. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and of course she's absolutely fabulous. And I'm not saying that just because she's, you know, watching or listening. Um, right. But you know, it, it is, it's hard to turn things over and, you know, and we don't, 
like to delegate and I it, and I do see that more in women than in men you know right. guys are like okay you go do that you know I, I'm, I don't have time I don't want to do it you go do that women right. are like Ooh, you know and and I am that control freak you know right. my my husband is somewhere in this world laughing at this um, because there's one way to load the dishwasher right <laughs> And you know, and so there's one way to do this, and there's and it's my way. And right. you know, when I finally figured out, just because somebody does it different, doesn't mean it's wrong. It was like holy schmoly, um, right? You know, and and so again, it comes back to that collaborating, to building those partnerships. You know, whether it's through organizations like NABO or um, you know, there's there's many other great women focused organizations, sure. you know, or just you know, networking and, and things like that. I think it's it's important that we as women really do start building these teams and these partnerships. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I will say too that when I started to get over my um my my delegation fear, mm -hmm. when I started to really research where my zone of genius is, if you will. Mm -hmm. I genuinely believe that every person out there has something that they just excel at. And then right. there's other areas where they don't and that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. They don't excel at it because they're not good at it, or they don't excel at it because they don't enjoy it. Right. And, um, one of the things for me is, even though I know how to use Excel, I don't particularly enjoy building Excel spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. It's just not, it's I not, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not really into it. That's why I'm married to a mathematician. <laughs> my, my husband is also very um, yeah. mathematically gifted. But when running the business, there are some women colleagues and eventually they typically develop into friendships as well mm -hmm. where I can lean into them and say this is the outcome I want to achieve or here's right. information thinking mm -hmm. specifically from like a finance standpoint mm -hmm. so I know how to and I like to access my balance sheet mm -hmm. my cash flow report things like that so that I can take a look at the health of my business mm -hmm. but generating those things actually is pretty tedious and annoying and I right. Would rather put hot pokers in my eyes if you really want to know the truth. Yeah. So when they hand it to me, I say, "All right," and I can read it. But a lot of times, I'll also ask. So, with this information, do you feel that I can purchase new software, or mm -hmm. I'm ready to hire somebody, or what percentages should I be looking at right. from a perspective to bring? Mm -hmm. So, I'll ask those questions of the people in my world. Now, conversely, they will ask me, or my clients will ask me, "Well, you know, I really want to engage in this. I have this cool idea for marketing." activity mm -hmm. so do you really think that this is a good idea I was like all right well let's again boil it down right what's the goal mm -hmm. what's the purpose is it marketing for marketing's sake because that's costly mm -hmm. so or is there an actual promotion tied to this and who are we targeting they're like oh anybody I'm like oh no 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love those people no I'm like well you market to everybody you market to nobody so right. um I remember using this analogy with a client this is a while ago and I've used this one over and over again where um Let's, I wanted to explain the difference between marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. So let's say you own a hair salon mm -hmm. and you've got lots of people back there and they're getting their hair done. You've got product behind the counter and a bald man walks into your hair, your hair salon and says, mm -hmm. I want to buy the product behind the counter. Are you going to sell it to them? I would. Sure. Right. Yeah. What I'm not going to do mm -hmm. is spend all of my marketing focusing on all the bald men in my city. Like, oh, right. I got to talk to them. Uh, yeah. You know, because they're an anomaly. Sure. Mm -hmm. you Sell to him, of course you'll sell to him because mm -hmm. you're just to sell things, but you're not going to market to them. So as soon as I make that analogy, I found people tend to understand, oh, marketing and sales are not the same. Right. I might need to hire an expert because I have my hair salon and I'm willing to market to everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's when you go broke. So mm -hmm. not unlike me leaning on a person who's say a fractional CFO or a bookkeeper or somebody who can infer knowledge. Uh, I have found that people do the same thing. And I'm sure you find this too, Deb, right. that they lean on you for mm -hmm. that information because it's a little bit more nuanced mm -hmm. and ways to kind of actually devise your marketing in a more mm -hmm. efficient manner so you can make more with less. Isn't that the right, right there? Right. So. <laughs> you know, and it is, it, it's tricky, you know, because I always love it when people tell me, you know, we want to, we want to, we need to market to everyone because we need to make as much money as possible. Right. No, you no. know, and, and, no. <laughs> and same thing with social media, you know, I right. want to have as many followers, connections, friends, oh. whatever the heck it is, you right. know, and, and thank heavens, the days are gone for the most part of buying fame. Oh, you know, I had some clients, I've, I, you know, more than once who have said, you know, we want to hit that 
10,000 mark, that whatever mark, you know, that arbitrary mark that they decided was what they wanted, probably right. because they looked at somebody else and that was the amount that they had. Right. You know, and so go buy it. And, and I always refused. I said, no, absolutely not. Because if, if you look at it, you're, you're now, you know, granted, it's not costing you money. Well, you know, right. cost money to, to buy them initially, but then it doesn't cost to market to them. Sure. But you're wasting, you know, all of that. And, right. And, and they're not seeing it, so they're not interacting with it. And then, of course, the, you know, with the, the way the algorithms work with all these various social media platforms, if it just goes out there and nobody interacts with it, then Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever figures, okay, nobody really cares. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then they stop showing it. Right. So, you know, it's much better to have 100 people who are going to engage with you as opposed to 10,000. I completely agree. You know, and, 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 and it is hard because especially when we're starting out, you know, or, you know, you could be in business 20, 30 years, whatever, you know, we, we don't want to turn money away, as you mentioned, you know, the bald guy. Right. And so we're always thinking, what are we going to do? So how do you work with entrepreneurs, you know, who are just starting out to help them find that sweet spot, who they're supposed to be actually reaching with their product? Right. So um, the first thing that I always start with is mindset. Like, are you in service to your customers and how are you in service to your customers? Because okay. fortunately, as entrepreneurs, we have a tendency to be under, I mean, people have a tendency to be mm -hmm. a bit myopic and mm -hmm. they constantly say, well, if I would buy it, therefore everybody would buy right. it. Right. It's well, a great product. Therefore. It's, no, it's totally a great product. Totally works. Uh -huh. It's like the best product ever. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe mm -hmm. not. So mm -hmm. if you're not coming to the table with not, how can I make money, which does matter. We'll mm -hmm. come to that in a minute, but how am I solving a problem? How am I bringing this? Mm -hmm. Who, and then the next question, of course, being who's your market? Right. So I ha I'm solving a problem, but for whom? Mm -hmm. Who am I solving this problem mm -hmm. for? And then defining your market, that's where it really gets tricky because that's what's going to inform everything else. So you kind mm -hmm. of start with that mindset component, like, all right, am I in service? Did I, do I have a true solution here? And then the market. And the market can be defined by demographic, sure, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everything from age and, and gender and things like that, but also motivation. And right. I think people tend to forget and they're like, well, I've got all the demographics here. Mm -hmm. And like, let's say you're doing a pay-per-click campaign inside of Facebook mm -hmm. and they think, well, I want women. I want women between the ages of 35 and 50 mm -hmm. who make this amount of money mm -hmm. or earn the household earns this amount. Right. Of money. Okay. Well, that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. and what if your product actually focuses on parents, not everybody who fits into that demographic right. mm -hmm. or maybe it only works with people who have children under the age of eight. So mm -hmm. now you've narrowed the focus even further. Mm -hmm. The more you do that, the, the better off you are. And then let's say you have, you're selling a jungle gym or something like mm -hmm. that. The motivation is to get the kids to go out and get some exercise or whatever it right. is. Mm -hmm. So the more you can actually narrow that focus, A, the more money you're going to save. Mm -hmm. And B, the more likely the person is to buy. Not unlike the point you made earlier where, sure, do I want 10,000 followers or do I want a hundred ideal followers right. who are exactly the ones that are going to buy my product. Mm -hmm. Once you kind of determined that market, then you kind of figure out, all right, well, I've got the market. Let's figure out the message. Mm -hmm. If I've got a mom and she's 38 years old and her kids are under five and they're driving her bananas, what's something that she's looking for? Peace, peace and mm -hmm. quiet. Right. Um, a means to be a good mom and maybe get her kids to be motivated and mm -hmm. active and, and doing mm -hmm. exactly all of those things. Mm -hmm. so, okay, now I know, well, how does this woman feed her children? Well, maybe mm -hmm. she's, you know, maybe she's cost conscious, but mm -hmm. she's also, you know, she wants the food to be fresh. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're narrowing that market. Now, right. that. now what tone would you speak to her? Mm -hmm. Is it something where you can commiserate? Is that right. the tone? When you're putting together your message, mm -hmm. you want your tone and your voice to actually be commiserating with her, to right. understand where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. We've got a solution, sister. We have been there. We have got mm -hmm. your back. Right. And all of a sudden, now, where's the medium? If she's this age, where is she? Mm -hmm. Do we put on a billboard? Right. Is she on Facebook? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is she on LinkedIn? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not. Is she reading a newspaper? She's 38. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Probably right. not. Newspaper? Yes, <laughs> say newspaper. What is uh -huh, uh -huh. And yet there is a demo, there's still newspapers and there's still a demographic for them, just mm -hmm. not her. Right. So, you know, kind of defining all of those things can actually help not only save money as an entrepreneur, but you need to do all of those things so that you're really not marketing to everybody mm -hmm. because you don't want to have somebody buy a product and then be disappointed because they got the wrong sense of 
this, this isn't a fit for me. Mm -hmm. right. why, why am I even seeing this message? Mm -hmm. And then conversely, you want people who are raving fans, like this widget is like the super best widget that I've ever widgeted in my entire mm -hmm. widget life. So, and you want them raving and super excited. Right. About it. So the more narrow you can get with your market, their motivation, and then the messaging around it, mm -hmm. helps you dictate the medium, which can help you save some money, but then you also actually get people that genuinely need what you do or whatever solution is that you have, and they're super excited about it. Mm -hmm. So I love that like kind of equation where, you mm -hmm. know, the funnel, so to speak, right. we're down. It down. So mm -hmm. yeah, I love that stuff. And, 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 and it is, it, it's funny because we've all seen ads, whether it's Facebook, whether it's television, whether it's whatever, that we see it, and I, or I see it, and I think, okay, somehow this is not me. Why am I seeing this? Right. And, and especially, you know, now television is different because, you know, it, 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 yeah, they do have very, you know, they, they know that their listeners or their listeners, their viewers are 20 to 45. I mean, you know, there's that whole sure. sweet spot and I pass that up. Um, and so there are times where I'm watching the program because it's, you know, it's a show that I like that's maybe younger and it's like, okay, that's not going to pertain. But, um, and, and it's obviously just mass advertising. Same with newspapers, you know, still for the most part. But when I see something on social media, especially on Facebook, where they have, you know, I, maybe it was that I, you know, and it could be that I typed a keyword in and right. that triggered it or something. But for the most part, I see it and I, and I know there was no reason for that ad to be showing to me aside from maybe I was female and maybe area you know, something like that. And, and so my first thought now, granted, you know, this is what we do. So we probably look at these things a little more critical is my first thought is I think what a waste. Yep. You know, and, and especially if I accidentally click it or click it on purpose, you know, and, and all that, because then I cost them money and yep. I'm not going to buy that product. Right. Um, you know, and, and now there are secondary markets, you know, and I think that's something that people always tend to forget because, you know, back to say that the, the jungle gym swing set thing, sure. grandma might want it, Absolutely. your uncle might want it, you know, all these various things. And so you do have those secondaries, but yeah, you know, it's, it's the, the more fine tuned we can get, the better our results will be. Absolutely. It's interesting too. One of the things that I find most fascinating about you mentioning, you know, pay-per-click advertising, two of the ones that we work with most would be Facebook advertising and then also Google AdWords. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting about Facebook, not unlike television, not unlike newspaper, is that even though the ad may show up for you, um, it's based on demographic, but not necessarily on a specific activity. Right. So you're watching a show, so the mm -hmm. ad will show up. Mm -hmm. Whereas Google AdWords, when those sponsored ads show up, it's mm -hmm. all search-based. Right. So it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you look like. Right. You type that magic word in. Mm -hmm. Chances are you're going to see this ad. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that we have found that those people tend to be more of the researchers. Now, yes, they'll click through, but the conversion rate is actually lower. Right. Facebook ads, mm -hmm. if you pull them out of their activity, not mm -hmm. unlike TV, not unlike a magazine, if mm -hmm. you're reading a magazine, you're not reading the magazine for the ads. No. It's not. And nor are you watching less the Super Bowl. You're mm -hmm. not watching the program for uh -huh. the officials. Typically, you're not. Right. But what's interesting is that inside of Facebook, you're looking at pictures of the grandbabies. You're mm -hmm. looking at, um, you know, maybe a baby shower over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're looking at a fishing trip that you went on, something along those lines. And right. then it'll, one of those ads jumps out in front of you. Mm -hmm. If it pulls you out of your activity, mm -hmm. the, like clicking through actually goes down, mm -hmm. but the conversion rate's pretty high. So I always mm -hmm. find right. that. Because it really got your attention. It really got your mm -hmm. attention. So I always find that stuff to be just, I can nerd out. Oh gosh, Deb, I can nerd out about that stuff all day. Uh -huh. I love I it. Kind of, I find that stuff fascinating. I mm -hmm. really, I really do. Um, but it is a, a very cost-effective way to to do marketing too, simply because you can really track everything and mm -hmm. and you know get out in front of the exact people you want to get in front of. So. Right. You know, and I mean, we could really nerd out and do A and B testing and, you know, all of these various things. And, and you know, it's, it's funny, I remember years ago, and I think this probably was when I was, you know, way back working for the American Cancer Society, we had the justification of, you know, the PR people, right, it was me, yeah. had to justify our existence to the, the, you know, and, you know, how did, how did they know that what we were doing was effective? Right. You know, and, and I mean, you know, 25 years ago, there was no social media, right. you know, all these various things. And so it was 
true media. I mean, you know, right. we were working with newspapers, television programs, all those various things. And, you know, about the only thing at that point that we could do were things that were very specific in the call to action. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe it was a specific 800 number. So if they called that 800 number, you knew they had, had heard that story on that television channel. Um, you know, but of course, back then, it was expensive, you know, to, to get those different numbers. Now, you know, you can get numbers for free and, and all these various things. So you can contest like that very easily. But, you know, it, once we knew, okay, this worked best, then we could focus on it. Um, right. You know, but, but yeah, it's, it is, it, and, you know, the, the nice thing is now, it, especially because of social media, the costs have gone down. Yeah. Um, you know, no longer are we spending, you know, ten, dollars $20,000 on an ad buy. We can spend a hundred bucks on a Facebook campaign and probably do just as well. Um, right. And that's, that's again, the, the cool part about technology. It is. And um, it also kind of, again, speaks back to, you know, even though the mediums have changed, Mm -hmm. The fundamentals have not. Right. So, you know, defining your market is really the most cost effective. Mm -hmm. And years ago, it used to be that, you know, you did want to cast a wide net, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, and get your message out to everybody. But what we did start to find, and, and this happened even before, you know, digital marketing came to true prevalence, mm -hmm. was, you know, in magazines and um, in TV programming, the market did start to segment. And right. um, that mm -hmm. segmentation is really where... Um, cost efficiency started to show up. Mm -hmm. Now you've got the internet where you can be, you know, a bagpipe fisherman underwater, you know, basket weaver. Right. And you will find a group that mm -hmm. is like, you know what? That's, oh, yeah. I love That's that. my people. <laughs> exactly right. Mm -hmm. Whereas it used to be there was a uniformity around an interest, like you said earlier, whether it was programming or mm -hmm. if it was, um, you know, Guns and Ammo magazine, if, you know, people that were. Um, weapon enthusiast when I'm personally not but you know if people were into that stuff and then you can also find well if, kind of like Amazon well if you like this you'll probably like this mm -hmm. and that's what's crazy about the segmentation now is right. really where the rubber meets the road it's mm -hmm. almost more critical than um, the cost like the cost keeps coming down because you can segment mm -hmm. so right. mm -hmm. and um, they say in the niches are the riches so you've mm -hmm. got to keep niching down and keep niching down and then make sure that message resonates with that. Mm -hmm. It's it's fascinating. It's unbelievable to watch. I'm only interested to see even further how much more niching is going to happen as right. the iGen or the Gen Z start to come. No, the, the, we've run out of alphabet. I don't know yeah, what that means. We have no alphabet. <laughs> Start getting its Greek letters or something. I don't know what's going to happen. But we'll, um, we'll go back to A. I mean, what happened to Generation A? <laughs> exactly right. Um, I'm interested to see what further segmentation exists there and mm -hmm. also what further entrepreneurship exists there right that demographic you know the millennials you see it with the because i personally am an mm -hmm. exer so the millennials you see it a bit more but then the next generation even further right truly just customize your existence mm -hmm. not just your job not just you know the lifestyle you want to leave everything mm -hmm. gets customized mm -hmm. and um, i'm really fascinated to see what entrepreneurship and what new businesses will burgeon from there mm -hmm. as well and what new market segments will right. burgeon from that group as well it's really I, it'd be really fun to be an anth anthropologist right now <laughs> oh i know you know just watching the the trends and and things because yeah it's it, it, like you said you know it, they're getting more and more specific with they they want this we you know my gender we're like okay whatever you know right um you know and and but and I think that's part of why millennials are getting kind of the bad press right. is, you know, because they're expecting something specific. Well, I'm sorry, what's wrong with expecting something specific? You know, right. if I want a hamburger, I want a hamburger. I'm not going to accept, you know, a filet of fish instead. Right. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, I, can you tell it's almost lunch? Uh, <laughs> and, but, you know, but I, you know, I do remember being brought up when being told it's close you know, right. it's whatever, you know, right. no, you know, if I'm going right. to spend my money, whether it's 50 cents or $500 or whatever, I want something specific, you know, and, and I love when we can personalize these things. Right. Um, my husband bought a new car uh, uh, last year and he was one of these, you know, he just wanted a car. He didn't really didn't care right. until he started looking into it. Right. And then I was dumbfounded at how much 
how many of the extras he got in this right. car. Now, there were a couple that I kind of wish that he would have got that he didn't, but it's his car. Right. Um, you know, it doesn't park itself. I really wanted it to park itself because <laughs> neither of us can parallel park. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, he got the heated seats and the this and the things that I never would have thought he would have, have decided were good. But when he had the option to do it, he was like, oh, well, right. must do that. You know, when I got my car, I'm like, it's got wheels, it drives, okay. You know, and, right. and but of course, I'm not a car person. Um, but but yeah, we're, we're getting to where we want something more and more specific. And and I love that, you know, and you're right. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful time to be an entrepreneur because if you can find that tiny little thing, now it might be a fad, you know, and, and it goes really fast. But if you right. make money off of it right then and then jump on to the next thing. I mean, that's the, the other thing is we're seeing so many serial entrepreneurs who right. make it, sell it, move on, um, right. you know, and, and so that's fun. But the other thing though, it, that, that really, you know, baffles a lot of people and is, is very difficult is there's so much competition. So let's, let's talk right. more about how can people really, really differentiate themselves from the competition. And part of it is, of course, the niche and those things. But how can we set ourselves apart from, say, a very similar type of, of product or service? Well, the one thing that a person can bring to the table that others can't is to bring themselves. Mm. And um, I think that even when, like, for example, Deb, you and I both do similar work. We're both in marketing. Right. And yet there are going to be people that are going to connect and resonate closer with you right. and then or with you mm -hmm. or with me. Mm -hmm. and what's crazy. And I think that it's really, again, kind of fun to watch this is when you actually can tease out your own authentic brand, your own mm -hmm. unique perspective on things. Um, there is no such thing as competition. Right. It's to become fit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see that people make when they're trying to define themselves is they talk about they talk about themselves as opposed to how they can be in service to their customer base. Mm -hmm. So the combination of being yourself but also inviting the person to be themselves. Right. For example, um, one of the people that I work I actually don't really work with this company anymore, but I did for a long time. He could not let go of family owned and operated. Just could not let go of the fact that that was his unique selling point. Mm -hmm. And I said, well why does that matter to your customer base? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, I mean, it shows that we've been established. I'm like, okay, so established. What does that tell your customers? Mm -hmm. He goes, well, we've been in business a long time. I'm like, yep, got that. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to your customers? Why does that matter to your customers? Right. Mm -hmm. If you can actually provide a solution, I don't care how long you've been in business at all. Mm -hmm. well, it shows that our process has been working really well and we've served multiple generations. I'm like, all right, you're getting there. Mm -hmm. You're getting there. Let's kind of tease it out. Well, clearly our process works very well because we've been in business for a long time mm -hmm. and we've worked out all the kinks. So you get this well-oiled machine. Right. Why is a well-oiled machine? Which means it makes their life easier. I'm like, boom, now we've got it. Right. You've made their life easier. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter that it's family owned. It really doesn't. Now, mm -hmm. if the way that you want to point out, like, we've got a well-oiled machine, which makes your life easier, demonstrated by a hundred years of, you know, longevity. Mm -hmm. now, that, now you have my attention. But right. you're just talking about how great your business is and your family is and how it really doesn't present the option to, to your customer base mm -hmm. to actually see why you're really good. It, it sort of is there. But people make the mistake of actually, again, kind of coming back to that myopic way of looking at things. Put yourself in their shoes. They've never heard of you. Right. So what's the single most important piece of information that you can give them? And the answer is, I can solve your problem. Right. Yeah. Your problem I don't is, care that grandpa company. founded your company. No, I really don't. And while I'm eating your product or I'm mm -hmm. using your product or engaging in your product, then you can say, well, you know, we've been in business for a long time. That's why our product is so mm -hmm. good. Right. Oh, you can say, now I can mm -hmm. refer. Mm -hmm. So in order to differentiate yourself, you want to be authentic in who you are. Mm -hmm. And ideally find something that does separate you, but separate you for your customer. Mm -hmm. Being family owned and operated is not, not necessarily going to separate you, even if you're the only business that is right. family owned and operated mm -hmm. in your space, unless you can actually convey to your customer base why that's important. Mm -hmm. It's not really a differentiator. Right. So in fact, it could be a negative for, it, for some people. It absolutely could be a negative. Um, you know, everything from... Uh, 
you know, like one of the areas where my, my one company, Go Beyond SEO, where we separate ourselves is we won't work with competitors. So let's say, for example, I'm working with, and I am working with, a, a family divorce attorney in Charlotte, North mm -hmm. Carolina. Mm -hmm. I don't work with another one. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. So that's our differentiator. Mm -hmm. um, why does that matter to you? Well, because law firms are very competitive right. and all of our focus is on you. Mm -hmm. So now we have a differentiator. So if you work mm -hmm. with somebody else, make no mistake, they're going to be working with your competitors too. Mm -hmm. Lawyers, they freak out. They're like, well, right. I, don't, mm -hmm. I want to work with you then. Mm -hmm. So that's a differentiator. Now, not every company can do that. Right. You know, not, you know, but and it depends on who they're trying to serve. I mean, it might not matter. Exactly right. And I feel that um, if what you think is your differentiator is something somebody else can say, it's not really a differentiator. So mm -hmm. I would come to the, for some reason I'm struggling with differentiator. I just had to, <laughs> I was just those words up for, for, yeah, we're recording this early Monday morning. <laughs> exactly. I need coffee clearly. So uh -huh. what I would say is make sure that your differentiation, if you will, is in service to your customer base mm -hmm. and, is actually, and actually something that is unique and distinct. Mm -hmm. So even if it's not your number one selling point, make that one little tweak mm -hmm. and it'll make a, all the difference in separating you from your competition. Right. You know, and the funny thing is it, it might not even be something that you think of. Right. You know, right. because we, you know, we've, we've talked about this, you know, that we get fixated on this. Well, it's really this that is why somebody wants to, to work with us. Sure. And so, you know, I always tell people, ask, Ask the people who worked with you or chose not to work with you. You know, right. why? Uh, you know, why didn't, why did you go with someone else? And, right. you know, you might get just a, a pithy response. Well, I clicked with them better. Right. Okay, fine. You know, and, and, but, you know, it, it but yeah, figure out why, you know, if you're missing the boat and, and, you know, sometimes that comes back to your advertising, you know, your messaging right. did that, you know, we, we mentioned a B testing. If this message resonated and this message didn't, okay, then this is the message you're supposed to use, even right. though this one might be the one that you love that right. you developed. I mean, right. and it's so cute and I love it. Yeah. And yet it's not resonating. There was a restaurant that I worked with in Reno, Nevada, and they're closed now. And I loved this little restaurant. They were so mm -hmm. great. But they were on a one-way street. And I remember having a conversation with the owner. And he did exactly that. He had asked a bunch of questions as to why people came to the restaurant. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, well, sandwiches are great. And, you know, this is awesome. And then he had, and it was a great story. And I mm -hmm. love telling the story. We had this one um, gentleman who used to come in and eat his sandwiches. They were a sandwich. That was awesome. I'd eat his sandwiches. And then all of a sudden he stopped coming. Oh, no. Yes. And then one day he came kind of out of the blue. I think it was his birthday or something. And he said, well, why did you come now? But why have you stopped? Mm -hmm. He goes, oh, well, you're on a one-way street and my office moved. So, <gasps> just that oh, so that truly was location. Yes, it was very mm -hmm. much location. He's like, I used to be able to walk to Rose, mm -hmm. which was the name of the restaurant. He's like, but then my office moved and I couldn't walk there anymore. Right. It's not convenient. Right. It was mm -hmm. absolutely my favorite restaurant, which is mm -hmm. why I came on my birthday. Mm -hmm. It didn't make sense because I only have an hour. And if I could walk in, grab my sandwich and leave or eat there, that right. was great. If I had mm -hmm. to try to find parking on a one-way mm -hmm. street. This is a problem. Right. And it had nothing to do with the product. Mm -hmm. It had everything to do with parking or mm -hmm. lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they were on a one-way street and it was kind of a pain in the neck to get right. there. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And down here in the South, there aren't blocks. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So it's just interesting that, um, your unique differentiator may not be obvious right away. Mm -hmm. so certainly, I completely agree with that statement, which is, you know, ask your customer base mm -hmm. and see why or why not. Right. Well, and we do get attached to things. Um, we, you know, many years ago worked with a professional photographer. She did some of the most spectacular portraits, um, you know, and, and I mean, they were wonderful. She would spend hours on them, and this was, you know, long enough ago that, that you know, it really was a complicated process mm -hmm. of touching up, um, you know, and, and, and making, you know, making the picture just absolutely fantastic. And she would, she worked a lot with families, and so she did, you know, pictures of, of kids at various growth stages. Sure. So, you know, first day of school, 16 years old, 18, you know, things like that. Right. But they were, you know, a, a portrait session was $5,000. Oh yeah. And this was 20 years ago. I mean, so yeah. that's a lot of money. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, I should touch base and just find out how much she charges now, just out of curiosity. <laughs> but she had this logo that was the cutest logo in the world. Her daughter had done it in crayon. 
And I mean, and it really was very cute, but her daughter did it in crayon. Right. And we said, no, you know, as much as you love that image and, you know, it's, it's not serving you well because right. it's the first impression that people are getting is, you know, there's, there's, well, it was, it was, this is a fun, you know, type of, a, and, and then when they found out the cost. Right. It didn't warrant the price. Right. Yeah, and, and so what we showed her was by having a sophisticated image and sophisticated branding, she, it made her life easier because it eliminated a whole bunch of people that she was having initial contacts with who then went, you charge how much? <laughs> and so, you know, it, it was worth it to her to switch. And, you know, we, we still incorporated the, the daughter's image in there. In, in, you sure. know, but, yeah, it was, it was that whole little piece that, you know, she got so caught up in it because it was so cute. And it's who right. she is. Um, you know, and, and so it, it is about, you know, what is it that we're doing? Um, misalignment is, is one of the biggest issues right. that people mm -hmm. run into. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago, I used to deal poker. This is a hundred years ago. I was. A I know. Poker. I read that on your bio. I'm like, oh my gosh, you dealt poker. How? <laughs> I, I dealt poker too, but I made more money dealing more. Mm -hmm. often than that. Um, but um, the the primary game for years was Texas Hold'em, which, mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know, it's you know two cards that are hidden, and then essentially five community cards. You make the best five card hand. But what would happen is, is people get what we called married to their aces. So ah. they have their pocket aces, meaning mm -hmm. they're taking cards in. Mm -hmm. in that nobody knew about. Mm -hmm. And even if the, the five other cards that went out there, so of seven total, two in your hand, five out there, mm -hmm. made a five card hand, mm -hmm. they would still just, they couldn't let go of their aces. Right. And right. it was very clear. Because those are the best cards. These are the best mm -hmm. cards. Mm -hmm. And people get that way with their logo and their message mm -hmm. and they get cutesy and they forget that it actually serves a function. Right. I love good Vespa. I like driving little Vespa, but with two kids and a husband and a dog, yeah. that's not going to get it done. Mm -hmm. so you have to consider the vehicle to be aligned with what your goal is. Mm -hmm. Right. So. Well, what are some other mistakes that you see, especially women entrepreneurs make? That they don't measure their activities. That's, okay. that's one of the big ones. They're not. Oh, okay. I'll raise my hand. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's tough because coming from PR, they're measure like, how do you measure, you know, something blowing in the breeze like right uh -huh. well, very clear there's wind out there mm -hmm. but how do you measure mm -hmm. how much wind you know it actually gets quite difficult mm -hmm. so one of the things that i would say that that they make the mistake in doing is that they're like well it costs this much so i'm going to spend this much and that's that well how do you even know how much it costs and is it really a cost or is it an investment right if you actually can measure which activities mm -hmm. Are working for you, mm -hmm. you would likely either spend more or spend more appropriately mm -hmm. based on whether or not it's working. Right. So what you're afraid of is wasting money, not mm -hmm. spending money. Mm -hmm. So if you're actually measuring what's working and what's not, if I told you that if you spent a thousand dollars, you could make two thousand dollars, and then you're like, wow, this is great. So I'll Sounds make good. Mm -hmm. okay. But what if I told you you spent two, you could make four? Oh. Like, oh. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But then yeah. all of a sudden you spend three, you're like, oh, I'm going to make six, and you're like, no, you'll make five. You're like, wait oh, a minute. Wait a minute. What did I miss? Mm -hmm. okay. Let's back it up. What if I spent twenty five hundred? Oh, you'll still make five. Cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Now you know I don't need to spend three. Yeah, I can that's that magic number. Mm -hmm. You gotta find the measurement. Mm -hmm. And the great thing about digital marketing and even some broadcast mediums is that you can track it. You right. Say, this happened from mm -hmm. this. This mm -hmm. activity happened right. here. Because they want you to spend more money. So they give you the tools to track it. Of course they do. Um, but tracking it is really the main, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is that mm -hmm. people will just kind of throw cash at it and like hope. Mm -hmm. And that's just not really spray and pray as we call it. Right. No. Mm -mm. no it's not the way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, tight and aggressive is the, is the approach you want to take. So mm -hmm. tight and aggressive. Say, all right, I know that this is my market. This is what I know motivates them. Here's the medium I know they're engaging in. Try that. Make some money. Then expand out. Mm -hmm. So. And measure your activities. That's that's one of the really the, the number one mistake that I right. see. Right. Well, don't know if yeah, because how do we know it was successful or not right. if we can't measure it? And well, I, know when, business, mm -hmm. I think maybe or all my business was from referrals. Was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have some empirical data? Mm -hmm. Because if it is, then build a referral program and mm -hmm. don't ever do digital marketing ever. Right. Oh yeah. Don't spend money. your money on it. Uh -huh. Um mm -hmm. be conservative, but be aggressive about mm -hmm. it. And know your numbers right know well, numbers. and and it's funny that you mentioned conservative because of course there's there is the spending too 
to Little. not enough to few right. when you say you're spending not enough because money's tight you mm -hmm. know you're a new business all these various things and you know but if you don't there is that sweet spot i mean you know yeah. like you mentioned you might have spent too much and then you you wasted money but if you don't spend enough then it's not going to be successful you're right so then you think you know i'm not going to do it it's you know it, it was funny we were talking before the program about you know the people who blog once a month and think right. why doesn't this work or right. you know the companies that post on facebook right once a month once a week you know i have clients that we're now posting four and five times a day for right we'll know when that's too much right. um, but what they do is working with those that number of posts sure. um, you know and and so that's you know that's and you know is it more work for me sure but you know it's we've got it down to this cute little system it goes you know and, and goes really fast but right. You know that the if we if we posted 20 times a day that might be too much and then we would lose but you know it's so it, it it is it's about tinkering it's about trying it's you know all these various things and it gets very confusing and so right. you know for for people who are just going oh i'm lost i don't know what to do tell us how they can work with you because you can solve some of these problems for them so how can they reach out to you and and you know what services and, and things do you provide well the, the first thing I'd want to mention is um, I would recommend that they download. I have a freebie. It's a freebie. Cool. Yay! Oh, we like free. free. We love free. That's all entrepreneurs love free. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, trishsamen.com forward slash seven. Cool. And that's spelled out. So S-E-V-E-N. Mm -hmm. And then my last name, Trish is phonetical, but my last name is S-A-E-M-A-N-N.com mm -hmm. forward slash seven. And Wait. that actually has an outline that's... Um, I've gotten a lot of compliments on it on where it's just an outline on, on how to um, kind of build a marketing plan mm -hmm. um, because you're going to spend time or you're going to spend money. Those are the two currencies in entrepreneurship. You're going right. to spend time or you're going to spend money. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a lot of money, then you're going to be spending a lot of time. Right. So if you want to learn, you want to network and do mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And as far as how to work with me, it really just depends on what it is that you need, but mm -hmm. you know, feel free to reach out to me at uh, go beyond SEO. Mm -hmm. um, so it's Trish at go beyond SEO.com. And you can just go to our website, which is gobeyond, G-O-B-E-Y-O-N-D-S-E-O.com. And we offer several different kinds of services. We offer your digital marketing services, but we also offer um, executive assistance, too. In other words, oh, okay. um, you know, if you really want some coaching, if you want somebody to mm -hmm. advise what direction to go in, and you say, you know, I sort of know what to do. I've got the money. I've got the team in-house, but I really just need. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. no, just the right way. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, and um, I'm going to be launching a course, hopefully, hopefully in May. So that's a, uh, cool. that's, stay tuned for that as well. Great. Well, and they can connect with you on social media and that's where you'll post yeah. about your course and all those various things. That's right. So um, thank you for saying that because I always forget. So Instagram is dish with Trish, which is D-I-S-H-W-I-T-R-I-S-H. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, also on LinkedIn, just Trish Saman. And um, on Facebook as well, Trish Saman LLC is my Facebook page. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. Well, you know, we could talk about this forever. Really to me, this is, it really is so interesting. And yeah, it's because we think the same. And then it's really right. funny that we're married to the same type of, of men. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, so what it means is we'll have you on again because you've got such great information. But until then, what would you like to leave our listeners with? What one thought? Oh, and watchers. See, I'm, I'm still not used to this being a video program. What would you leave the people who are, are consuming our content, what would you like to leave them with? So for the people that are consuming content, um, when you're marketing, make sure that you are, to thine own self, be true. Don't promote something that isn't accurate about you. Okay. Stay in alignment with who you are, even if it feels like you're standing all by yourself, which it will feel that way. Entrepreneurship is a lonely endeavor. Oh yeah. I love these podcasts because we've all been in that dark place. We've all been, you know, sad and like, this isn't going to work. And, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm not good at this. And this isn't the space that I'm supposed to be in. If you stay in alignment with what you know how to do, the audience will come. So just you know, stay true to yourself. And, um, and stick with it. I know it's hard. So just stick with it. That's what I would say to, to entrepreneurs. Perfect. I love it. Well, one more time. What's your website? Uh, GoBeyondSEO.com. And then also my freebie is TrishSamen.com forward slash seven S-E-V-E-N. 
and then connect with me online. I'd love to hear from you. And I'm always putting out little tips and stuff like that on my stuff. Perfect. Well, and yeah. you've got a great blog and, and all sorts of stuff. So, you know, everybody make sure that, that you follow Trish. Even if you're a man, it's okay. Yeah, you're a man. I love you. <laughs> because marketing is marketing, you know, and, and you know, so it's, it's, you know, all these tips and, and information, it, it's for everybody, you know, and, and so, you know, it's, it's great information. So make sure you connect with Trish. So I am Deb Creer. I've been having a wonderful time talking about, you know, that that is close and near and dear to my heart, talking with Trish Saman. And until next time, everyone have a great day. Thanks for listening to the Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer. Join us next time for more real-life stories and techniques to power up your business. You've been listening to C-Suite Radio. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.